what can we do to reverse global warming? Become aware of the solutions and think about the actions you can take as you listen to how we are drawing down in Pennsylvania. Educating girls, family planning, and women smallholders are all project drawdown solutions that form the women and girls sector, areas often overlooked but key to reaching drawdown. Dr. Catherine Wilkinson, Vice President at Project Drawdown and a senior writer of the book Drawdown, the most comprehensive plan ever proposed to reduce global warming, shares the important link between women and girls and climate change. There are kind of three key areas where I think the intersection between climate and women and girls is, is really critical. So one is that we know women and girls, especially under conditions of poverty, are hit first and worst by climate impacts. But they are also the ones who have many of the solutions. And we see that gender equity, critical areas of gender equity, actually turn out to have a positive ripple effect for the planet. So that's, that's the second area. And the third is that we're seeing really catalytic leadership on climate from women and girls. And we definitely need more collaboration, more community building, creativity, compassion, emotional intelligence, a lot of things that we're seeing women and girls bring to the table around climate. Dr. Wilkinson acknowledges that although there is progress for the development and achievement of women and girls across the globe, challenges still exist. So I think we're seeing a really exciting rise in the leadership of women and girls, in advancement around critical areas of the rights of women and girls. The two that we focus on in Drawdown are education and access to reproductive health care. And we're seeing that progress is being made, but not nearly enough. There are still too many girls who aren't in school and too many women who don't have access to reproductive health care and contraception. So things, I think, are moving forward, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Dr. Monica Montesinos, professor of psychology at Penn State Greater Allegheny, encourages more interdisciplinary conversations while working toward solutions to really emphasize that gender is integral to all conversations that groups are having. It's not a very good idea to think about women as a monolithic group or category because there are divisions among women, for example, according to class, social class, ethnic background, sometimes regional places of residence. And so women may, in some cases, overuse resources in order to survive as a response to poverty. That's class or overuse resources as a result of wealth, like overconsumption. So poor women may be affecting climate change because they rely on firewood and that contributes to desertification. And they rely on firewood because they are in charge of cooking, right? So the idea that it's important to identify divisions, distinctions within the category of women, I think helps the analysis. Rural women will have a connection to global warming that is different from urban women. And women who depend on subsistence agriculture will have a connection that is different from women who work in factories or women who work in industrial agriculture. Dr. Montesinos continues by calling attention to the importance of how new generations are socialized and who transmits the new culture and norms that have the environment at the center. 
as mothers and teachers are central to this cultural transmission, they feminize the communications. She also stresses the need for women to be in positions of power where they can make decisions and have some control. That's the importance, I think, of looking at this from the gender inequality perspective rather than gender period or worse yet, women, because uh, there is a hierarchy of gender and women are in a subordinate position with much fewer opportunities to make decisions, to control resources, to be autonomous. And decisions made by men sometimes miss important aspects that affect women's lives. So you would need to redistribute power and material resources and symbolic resources in order to give women voice and actually allow them to participate in the decision-making process. From start to finish, Dr. Montesinos reminds us that women need opportunity, opportunity to participate in all projects and policies at all stages and levels. And the other point that we just talked about is to facilitate women's participation in the assessment of needs, of communities and countries and global debates, what is needed and what are the priorities for planning future projects or policies and what are the budgets, how much money will be spent on this or that and who will participate in the implementation. Often women get marginalized at all these levels from the planning, from the needs assessment to planning to implementation. And all that comes from women's subordinate position in society, in the professions, in politics, in governments. In the state of Pennsylvania, there are several initiatives working to advance women and girls. For example, the Pennsylvania Commission for Women plays an important role in advising the Pennsylvania governor on policies and legislation that impact women, supporting economic and civic opportunities for women, encouraging mentoring programs for girls and young women, identifying programs and opportunities for the benefit and advancement of women, and serving as a resource center for Pennsylvania women. The commission also acts as an advocate for policies and legislation that serve the best interests of women and girls in Pennsylvania. The work of the commission is important, especially when you consider the statement made by Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf in 2015, where he said that Pennsylvania women earn just 76 cents. For every dollar a man earns, they make up 75% of our minimum wage workforce, and they are two times less likely to work in STEM occupations than men in the Commonwealth. In addition to the work done through the state government, organizations such as the Women and Girls Foundation focus their initiatives in Pennsylvania on developing the female leaders of tomorrow and advancing women's rights in the present. Their programs are committed to identify statewide solutions to the problem of gender inequity so that all women do not face discrimination on the basis of nationality, economic status, class, ethnicity, race, sexual orientation, or marital status. Pennsylvania organizations with a similar mission include the Pennsylvania National Organization for Women, Pennsylvania Women Work, the Women's Law Project, the Pennsylvania Conference for Women, and more. To reduce emissions and achieve the solutions defined 
by the project drawdown sector of women and girls, Dr. Wilkinson encourages all individuals to do their part by becoming aware and getting involved with the local to global efforts. I think it's really important to think about areas where you can get involved in your own backyard first. We know that there are challenges around reproductive health care in particular in, in many places around the U.S. So I would say see who's active where you live and begin there. There are also lots of fantastic organizations working on these issues around the world. So lots of opportunity if you want to support organizations. You might take a look at groups like Room to Read or CAMFED that are doing great work around girls' education. You might look at the efforts of Marie Stopes International or Pathfinder International on reproductive health care. And there's just a lot, I think, to learn about this nexus of women and gender equity and climate. And the wonderful podcast, Mothers of Invention, is a great place to start and really get a sense of just how incredibly women are leading on climate around the world. Thanks for listening. This is Anna from Penn State Brandywine.